one all week, obviously. Pressure is nothing. Yeah. Give a world win for Lewis again, is that fair to say? Yeah, it's up and down. I know, um, obviously, starting off uh, the LVs and then playing there, and then coming in the training one day, mm. called up to go up to training there. Yeah. Well, came, came here in the morning, phone call to go straight to Cardiff, and then mm. it's sort of been a bit non stop then, but just nice to have the call up. I just got to concentrate on this weekend now, really, and yeah. make sure that's right first. How do you find the well set up? Yeah, it's good. It's a little bit different down here in terms of um, how, how the training sessions are run, but um, no, it's good. I really enjoy this. Um, so I think it's sometimes good to experience different environments, different different coaches, and how you can learn a lot then, and obviously learn from play, different players around you. And I've really enjoyed it. Mr. Gallagher's a former hooker. You know what I mean? Yeah, obviously he's um, done a bit of scrummaging work, you know, a little bit of technical work here and there. But um, no, I came in quite late, so I think they were just more concentrated on on the side and make sure that was all right. And uh, but now you pick up I pick up stuff from him and all the other coaches there, which you would obviously do. Obviously, there's Robins up there as well as um, as a uh, international hooker as well. So as well as uh, Warren, so I've learned a lot to be honest in the last well week or so I've been there. But obviously, I was up there a li- little bit during the autumn and learned a lot there as well. Disappointed not to get the call up properly? Um, no, not so much disappointed because I think um, obviously I've been around, this is my fourth season now, with being the first team year, but I think this is my first year where I've played regular and had uh, the opportunity to play in some big games and had some had more of an impact and a significant part of them games. So I've, I wasn't really disappointed because um, obviously I'm still learning, learning the game and uh, it was just another, I just saw it was another opportunity to be able to play regular and get another three or four games where I'd have played quite significant game time again and learn more of them four games or four or five games whatever we got over this period. How do you handle the fact that your performance on the weekend then might have an impact on whether you probably start on a bench? Um, do you not think right or do you? No, I think you just got to well, put it to the back of your mind and not think about that. You just got to go try and play play the same way you've been playing all season and. Do and do what's been, well, do the things that's been making you get perhaps getting recognised and making new performances be at that level all season. I think that's all the way you got to look at it and just get stuck in. To be honest, huge carrot one. Huge carrot one. Yeah, it is a huge carrot, but I think that's a brilliant one. Is you just it's just see you know, what I can do and see if I can really step step it up another gear and hopefully move on. Was this what you play for, Ken? Isn't it that, that opportunity? That's yeah, definitely, definitely. I think uh, you always need something to aspire to, and um, obviously, it's, I'm not sure how, how close it is or how far it is, but I've just got to go out there again on Saturday and hopefully get a good performance in and uh, get the result we need. John Davis and Mike Roberts obviously been golden you all weekend, Ken, and we're saying even a Welsh cap and you haven't. <laughs> yeah, well, I just ignore them too. <laughs> what about. Smiley, how important has that been for you as a player to have a guy like that who's widely recognised now as a, one of the best, if not the best, in Europe? Oh, definitely it's huge. You know, I've learned a lot of him. We obviously we worked worked together regularly, and he's been um, he's been brilliant. Obviously, trying to bring on bring on the side and making sure everybody's at the top of their game, and obviously he's helped me no end. Just being able to have a chat with him here and there, and uh, but obviously having s- someone. Of that quality to try and catch in a way and trying to keep pushing yourself and pushing your standards to try and bridge the gap and hopefully overtake him in uh, in certain ways and obviously with having him there he's like you said if not well one of the best tuckers in the world and to have somebody like that there is just going to keep you keep making you work harder and uh, and just pushing yourself and pushing your standards. What do you admire about him as a player of the blue? Ah, he's a good boy. He's easy, easy guy to get on with. You know, he's uh, he's good banter on the around the camp, and he keeps everybody quite uh, feet on the ground in a way. You know, he's uh, he's a good guy like that. And obviously, as a player, he's, he sets high standards for himself. Obviously, what he done on the Lions with the with the scrimmage, and he's a strong scrimmager. And I've learned a lot from that. I'm being on the receiving end now and again in training, but you know that's what you want. You need you need to go through him experiences to learn, and obviously. Um, the way he trains is second and then it's just something that you've got to push to and 
keep your standards up there and to move yourself on as a player as well. Mm. What happened to hookers? Because okay. you all seem quite reasonable men, and I always thought you were mental. <laughs> I don't know, we're just going to settle down, ring in a little bit, I, think. I don't know, I'm not sure. It's, you know, how important is a mental side of being okay? Because you're going in, you know, the joining point is 16 men. Yeah, you've got to. No protection, just your head. <laughs> I, I think you've got to perhaps have a bit of a steely side. But I, I always see they go, we move a back row into to the hooker because he's not big enough, but you never see them sort of make it. You've got to win a do I think, and be brought up within a way and be willing to stick your head in there with a hurt. So. Yeah. I couldn't play anywhere else, I think. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with them? Um, because the game has changed so much, but that is still a key area. But your kind of game as well is the bits around the field. Ironically, I'd imagine that's... Do you enjoy that more than the actual...? Um, yeah, obviously I do enjoy it. Like, at age grade, the, the scrum doesn't really matter as much because you can only push whatever it is, the one and a half metres. So, But once you move up to sort of the senior side of rugby, I think it does take a lot more emphasis because basically the way I, I looked at it, if, if the scrum's not really doing well then you, you're not playing on the front foot as a side so that doesn't benefit the carrying and the running side of the game so and you do get quite a lot of satisfaction if you're you're really on top in the scrum and you're obviously pushing your opposite up and a lot of pressure which uh, does give you a huge satisfaction and, uh, and a big mental edge I think. Can you remember your first senior scrum and who was in the guest and what was it like? Yeah, my first senior scrum was, well, at regional level, was um, Northampton away against Steve Thompson. What was that like? It was an experience, because Lou Reed sent one through and it kicked, <laughs> and it, and it kicked yeah. off, and I, <laughs> I didn't know what was. <laughs> Pre-season yeah. friendly, yeah. Lou Reed sent one through and I didn't know, and it all kicked off, and I didn't know what. So you were there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't, didn't really know what, it was mine and Lou's first, first game. And I've well, I didn't know what to do to be honest. Mm -hmm. I had some. I think it was lucky John Davis was there and Phil John. They sorted it out then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. But it was a bit of fun. What do you think about because playing against guys like Thompson and you know you obviously got Smiley here. Yeah, that's obviously what you aspire to. I imagine to be those kind of. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, it's, like they obviously Smiley's been been on a Lions tour. Perhaps one of the well, one of the best players on that tour and. Um, Steve Thompson's World Cup winner, you know, and you want to achieve what they've achieved. Thompson's a British lion as well, and you, you want to, you do want to have their accolades after you know when when you retire. Looking back, I suppose you you don't want to be remember, you want to be remembered for mm -hmm. things you've done, and that's what I'm trying to do down here. You know, just keep working hard and keep pushing my standards to where they are, and hopefully aspire to to achieve what they've achieved. It'll be a tough test on Saturday, isn't it? I mean, they're missing key players, but. You know, they're still going to have a pretty strong side on the map. Yeah, the champions of Europe, and you don't win trophies like that by not having strong squads. You know, they, they'll they'll miss six six or seven players, whatever it is. But then you look who they got coming in. They're probably internationals in their own right. There anyway, you know, you missing Rob Carney, but Gervin Dempsey's coming in. who's a British lion and all that. So Leo Cullen's out, but Marlo Kelly's coming in. You know, so it's just. They've just got players coming from everywhere, so we just got to concentrate. I think on what we can do and look to put a performance like that in. So put a performance and learn what we the mistakes that we've had against them over the past last couple of games, and yeah. and we'll really see how much we've come on as a squad. So you can't afford to let that gap between. There's not much of a gap between yourselves and the Blues. But the Dragons is a little bit of a gap there, isn't it? You can't afford. That yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, we've. We got. I think we've got to think of ourselves. If we keep getting results, perhaps Cassie are the two sides. But if we keep winning, then it means they got to keep winning. So especially then whoever slips up first. But I think we just got to concentrate ourselves and make sure we're another one slipping up. Thanks, Ken. Okay. No, no problems. No problem. Okay.